Monakam, Namaste, Namaskar. Welcome back to uh, Jal Prayag. I'm going to start a new topic today. It is going to be on uh, basic stability. I'm going to uh, define very common terms in your uh, stability. I'll try to choose around the seven of them for now. And I'll continue on the rest of them in the different parts of our different series. So let us start the first part, which I call it as uh, basic stabilities definitions. So let us go ahead with this topic. Before I start with the definitions, I'm just going to just show you uh, a few different stages of a vessel, which you can uh, find it day-to-day uh, -day life. I've shown you three different uh, stages actually. And to depict uh, how much it is submerged, I've shown you the Plimsoll mark or the summer load line as well. Let us say the first one is at uh, draft one, and uh, then number two and number three. It's uh, very, very evident that all the three stages have got different displacement. A ship's weight or a mass is always called as displacement. There's a reason for that. I'll be doing a different module on uh, the definitions and flotation uh, later on. Let us stick on to the definition, basic definitions here, where I'm going to start with displacement. The first and most basic definition of displacement is going to be your light ship. I'm going to make it very simple uh, for beginners again to understand. I'm not going to go into a uh, lot of nitty gritties. So let me make it very simple and say that it is an empty ship, but you'll have your standard machinery and equipment fitted. So that is what is called light displacement. Then the second definition, uh, definition which is one of the most uh, commonly used and important definition to understand is called load displacement. Load displacement means that when the ship is floating in salt water, when I say salt water, I'm going to be specific on density of 1.025. So I should be floating in salt water. And at that time, my summer load line should be exactly on the water surface. So if I am in this condition, whatever is my mass or weight of the ship is called load displacement. I can give you in a small uh, equation uh, method also. So if I give you an equation, this is what I call it. That means I had a light ship. I loaded something. And when I loaded something, you can see I put it on a bracket. It can be cargo, it can be ballast can be lube oil, fresh water, stores, passengers, crew and effects, etc. So when you have a light ship and you load all these items and many more, which are put on bracket, then I end up in load displacement, provided I'm in salt water and I'm exactly water line is matching your summer load line. Let me show you with a figure, easy to understand. So this is a condition where you can see my water line is not matching with the Plimsoll mark. And right now I have given you a condition that I'm floating in seawater. Let me call this as the empty ship. So whatever weight I get is called light displacement. Now I'm going to go to the second definition, which is called load displacement. We just saw. If you want to have load displacement, what are the conditions? Before that, let us see, light ship is empty ship. I don't have any cargo. And I've given you the list of all the no's. Let us look at the second condition. I'm going to put a ship again. I'm in salt water. Now my Plimsoll mark is exactly touching at the water line. And these two are the markings for the water line. Provided I am in salt water, and now 
if I measure the weight of the ship or the displacement, this is what is called load displacement. This is the same definition which we saw in the last page. So I'm showing you what is light displacement and what is load displacement. Let us proceed further. How can I reach from light to load? That is my next step. Okay. Again, load displacement is empty ship plus all of them which I have written. Let us go to the third this, uh, definition called dead weight. Okay. Again, dead weight is also a very important uh, definition for you to understand. Now, for you to measure dead weight, I should be again in salt water and the water line should be matching with the summer load line. But I want to look at what did I load. So this is what is mentioned in the bracket. The same features were mentioned in the previous definition of load displacement. Because I said from light ship, if I load whatever is in this bracket, I can reach the summer load line. So I'm looking only at this bracket value. This bracket value is what is called as your dead weight. Why? Because from light displacement, I put in some weight in the ship and I made a condition where I was in salt water and my summer load line was matching with the water line. And that is the time I reach the condition called load displacement. That is why this item, whatever I have loaded is called dead weight. I can reshuffle this equation. I can put dead weight is equal to load displacement minus light displacement. There's something really important you need to notice here. Both your definition number two and definition number three have been given some criteria and that criteria is for you to define dead weight as well as load displacement i should consider myself in salt water and my draft mark should be at the summer load line so i'm going to show you the picture again how to reach the load displacement from light displacement and what is the intermediate stage, what your loading is called. So these two pictures were already shown. So how did I reach this from light displacement to load displacement? I added something called dead weight. And that something was your cargo ballast fuel, whichever I mentioned. So this is the simplest way of understanding what is light, what is load, and what is dead weight. Again, let me repeat the word load displacement and dead weight. Both of them are locked for a condition called when floating only in seawater, which is 1.025. And at the same time, your water line should be matching with your summer load line. Let us proceed for the next definition. Uh, before that, let me show you one more uh, important understanding what you should uh, realize. I just go back to the previous slide. I've marked the water as a dark green, green color I mentioned as 1.025 RD. You can see I've changed the color of the water. And I mentioned it can be any water which is not 1.025. Let us look at the same situation as the previous slide. Let us say that I'm here at light displacement. I loaded something. I'm not in seawater, I'm not in 1.025. And I've loaded something and I've reached this situation. That means again, my plimsoll mark is matching with the water line. But my water is not seawater, which is 1.025. It is any other water. Then I cannot call this as load displacement. Similarly, this amount which you loaded, I cannot call that as dead weight. Similarly, I cannot call this also. So just remember, load displacement and dead weight are two locked definitions for particular conditions where it should be seawater and it should be matching with the Limsol mark.
Let's go to the next definition, which is present displacement. The word present, if I want to uh, tell you in very simple, it is neither light displacement nor load displacement. Whatever is in the present condition in any water, please remember any water. It can be in seawater also. As far as I am not light and I am not load, I call it present displacement. I can give you in a small equation. Present displacement is equal to light shift plus something whatever you loaded at a present condition. Something on board is not a very uh, right term, but uh, for you to understand, I can still mention that. Whatever you loaded with cargo ballast and all, provided you are neither light nor load. Let us see what is dead weight aboard. The word aboard means whatever is on board. The word dead weight means whatever I loaded. Here also, again, if you see in the previous number four, definition number four, I have mentioned something with bracket. So this dead weight is related to that bracket. So let us see what it is. I'm looking at only the mass of whatever something on board, which I called in definition number four. And what is that? That is the bracket. Your cargo ballast, etc., within the back bracket, which is in the present condition. So the present displacement is related to dead weight aboard. I can give it a small equation where it says my present displacement is light ship plus something what I've added, whatever something on board. And that is what is a dead weight aboard. I can reshuffle the equation and give you like this one. So dead weight aboard is present displacement minus light displacement. Let us look at the picture. It will make it more clear. I'm giving you a light displacement. I'm giving you one more condition where it is neither light nor load. It can be in any, any water. It can be in any water, doesn't matter. And this is what is called present displacement. So how did you reach the present displacement from light displacement is because you loaded something and that something is your dead weight aboard which is mentioned as cargo, ballast, fuel, lube oil, etc. But you loaded something that you couldn't reach the load displacement criteria. So somewhere in between. So this is what is your dead weight of load. Let us look at one more last definition of, which is related to the displacement, which is called dead weight available. So what is available to you? The word available means what is the maximum you can go from your present condition? So I can say the total mass of cargo, ballast, whatever I've mentioned, freshwater stores, etc., which I can load from now, that means I am at present displacement, how much more I can load to bring the ship so that the summer load line will be at the water line and I'm floating in salt water which means I'm directly relating it to the load displacement. This is the best definition for you to understand. Dead weight available means the maximum what you can load is load displacement minus the present displacement. And you should realize I can make one more equation out of it. See here. If you realize load displacement is directly involved with dead weight, and present displacement is directly involved with dead weight aboard. So you can do a difference of dead weight minus dead weight aboard also. And that is also called as dead weight aboard. Okay, let us look at the picture. This was uh, the previous picture where I showed you what is dead weight aboard. Now let us see what is the last condition for this definition. I'm giving you a condition where I'm in salt water. I'm matching with the plimsoll line on the water surface. And this is called load displacement. So from present displacement, how did I reach to load displacement? That is what is dead weight available. Now you can see in this picture, all the diagrams which I started with are again there back. So as a quick recap, 
I can start from a light displacement. I can load something, which is called dead weight aboard. I can reach a present displacement. I can load more so that I can reach a maximum, which is called load displacement. So load displacement is only in salt water. If you realize, if I ask you what is the dead weight of the vessel, I can give you one more equation, which is called dead weight aboard plus dead weight available. If you add both of them also, you will get the definition of dead weight, which we saw quite earlier. That was the third definition we saw. So you can make it dead weight aboard plus dead weight available is also called as dead weight. So these were the uh, six basic definitions regarding displacement and the weights, what you're going to add. I'll be doing one more uh, definition, which is called as water plane coefficient. This is the last definition I'm going to do in this module. I'll continue from whatever I finish from here. The remaining definitions I'll be continuing in the next part of definitions of stability later on. So I'm going to look at what is water plane coefficient. Let us quickly see that normally the ships what you see which are sailing they are not in generally a box or a rectangular shape you can find various shapes i've just shown you a couple of examples various shapes and i've shown you uh, a line which is differentiated into the black and the white part of the ship i can call the black part is the underwater part so the horizontal line what you can see is the water line that means that is the draft marks. Right now, this is all the draft marks. If I cut all these shapes exactly at the draft marks, that is a particular draft, and I see from top as a plan view, I'll call that water plane area. Okay. Now, these shapes are quite odd. So, calculating this water plane area is not very easy. And at the same time, at different drafts, the shape of the ship changes. So that means the water plane area also changes. I've shown you a small example where he's showing you as he was cutting exactly at the blue marks. So whatever you see from the top is called the water plane area. And you can see it is not a rectangle or not a box shape so that I can easily calculate that. But there is a method, there is a, a simple method available to you. And that is what we are going to see. I'm going to take again a condition. Let me say that I uh, took a boat. I cut that exactly at the watermark. And then this is what you see from top view. That means you're looking from the top on that surface. You can see a shaded surface that is the boat's area or water plane area. Now, uh, you should realize I formed a rectangle, and that rectangle shows extreme length and extreme breadth. So, if I ask you, can you calculate the extreme area? Yes, you can. Extreme length into breadth is the area of that rectangle. But you should realize the ship shape is not covering the full rectangle. The shaded area is not covering. For this, I have a very simple method where I can say, for example, that the shaded area is 70% of the extreme area. It's only 70% of the 70% of the extreme. So in that case, I can calculate the water plane area. So I can say water plane area of the boat is extreme into 70 percent whatever answer you get is the water plane area of that particular shape at that time in other words this figure which i gave you in percentage is also called as water plane coefficient and it is represented by cw again i'm going to repeat that same definition boats water plane area is l into b into cw so that 70 percent is cw if I reshuffle this equation, you should realize 
I can write CW is equal to water plane area of the boat divided by the extreme L into B. And this CW is also called as coefficient of fineness. So if you come across the word, it means water plane coefficient. You can see in this picture also, the boat has been sliced exactly at a draft. And you can see the brown color. What you see from as a top view is the water plane area. It is called AWP, water plane area. And if you see the formula, when you divide it by your extreme length into breadth, it gives you water plane coefficient. So this is what is water plane coefficient. I can show you one more picture. Just to highlight, when you cut this vessel exactly at the blue, you can see there's a water plane area. You can measure the extreme length and the breadth. And when somebody gives you a figure of water plane coefficient, I can find the water plane area. Where I'm going to use water plane area, we'll see in the later part of stability modules. But right now it is only definitions. So I'm going to stop with this definition. I hope uh, this was simple and useful. And uh, I'll be coming up with more definitions in a sequence. And uh, I'll be uh, looking at a lot of basics of stability also one by one. So this was the first video for stability. I'll catch you soon with the next module. Keep watching Jalprayag. Wanna come? Namaste. Thank you.